And once again, welcome. Good afternoon, in fact. Uh, welcome to episode 825. And the topic today is going to be an interesting twist. I'm actually using a very weird <laughs> metaphor, but we'll see how it goes. And the title, because of this, is Your Dating Life is About as Successful as the Titanic, and for Good Reason. And I'll explain what that means, and it will make sense, I trust, when I get to that. So before I jump into the topic at hand, let me introduce myself so you know I am and why you might want to watch this whole broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't seen my name somewhere in this broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, help you get better orientation to have healthy relationships, both if you're single or if you're in a relationship, so it for both. And I'll put a link in the back end for that so you can get the copy. Um, I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And that's what drives my work with helping women be more in their own authority and, and empowered and inspired. And also led to these talks over two, two and a half years ago now called Messages from the Masculine. Hi, Catherine. Nice to see you. Uh, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Feminine Heart. Now, this is episode number 825, which means it's 824 days I've done this before this. So I've gotten kind of fairly comfortable, although I keep screwing up. So stay tuned for what could happen. And today, <laughs> today's topic is your dating life. It's about as successful as the Titanic, and there's a good reason why. And I'll explain what that means and break it down in a very simple way. Because I actually want to use the analogy of the iceberg. Yes, the Titanic sank after hitting an iceberg. And for some of you, that's your dating life. <laughs> but I'm using this to mean a different analogy with the, with the iceberg, so I'll get to that in a second too. So let me preface this by saying, if you've had... Um, as a hit and miss luck with your dating life, I would say actually more if you've had some pretty downward spiraling challenges in your relationships and dating life. This may explain why. In fact, if you've had some, um, how do I say, it? describe this. If you've had some repeat offenses, repeat offenders, repeat experiences, we'll put it that way, with different people but the same sort of experience has been happening, you definitely want to watch this broadcast. The reason I'm talking about an iceberg, which led to the Titanic analogy, so that's my reach, so just so you know, and I come back to the topic. But the reason I'm talking about an iceberg is because an iceberg, if you're not aware of it, is roughly about 10% above the waterline and 90% below the waterline. Some people say it's actually 95 below and 5% above, some people say it's 20% above and 80% below. Bottom line is that most of the iceberg is below the surface. What's this got to do with your relationship daily life, you won't be wondering. I will explain. Your dating experience, your relationship experience, in fact, may not be what you're expecting. And in fact, you may be discovering some painful um, awarenesses along the way. Because what's happening is, or should I say, what you're experiencing is stuff that's below the surface, like the iceberg. And what I'm particularly talking about is the way that you are um, holding and framing the idea of relationship and love in your own self. And by the way, what I'm talking about here is not just limited to relationships. This affects every area of your life, including money, including health, including religion even. This um, predispos predisposition to do things a certain way is caused or is generated by your, um, let's put it this way, your younger self. That's simply to put it. I mean, in, in brain technology and stuff like that, I guess you put it as the, um, I forget which part of the brain of which now. But it's the midbrain, which is kind of the mammalian brain in, in biology. But basically, it's that part of the brain that learns things because it's beyond the level of survival, which is instinctual reptilian brain. Um, a friend of mine, Dr. Paul Shearley, explains the brain in multi multitudinous glory in explaining how we function, learn, and can change our wiring, which is really great stuff. Um, why are you, what, so was it Catherine? Oh, you're really talking to us for quite some time now. I've been making, I have been very pedantic about this. I've spent over two and a half years of talks now, and every day for almost all of that time, which is why I'm now 825 episodes. So yes, I have been doing quite a few of these. So, and you're very welcome. Um, so thank you for the feedback, <laughs> Catherine, I appreciate that. So our mammalian brain, which is our younger self, basically, because to, to, to way explaining it, and I've talked about this in other ways before, our, was, uh, was our frontal cortex, which is our conscious mind, which is the part that decides and chooses and makes, and makes choices and thinks and reviews and studies and stuff like that. 
that's all up front here, the front part of the brain. The midbrain's in the middle, and then the, the, the um, reptilian brain is down at the lower base of, uh, base of the spine. That's instinctual, that's like fight or flight type thing. It's just fight, flight, freeze. Um, there's another one. I forget which, there's like four or five different words for that, but that's basically the basic brain of the brain. You don't date from there, just to be clear. If you're dating from the survival level, you've really got some issues and we need to talk. <laughs> but I'm speaking about the midbrain, which is really our subconscious. Or in fact, it's, I, actually, I hate using the word subconscious, and this is actually something Paul Sheely talked about. It's other than conscious, because our conscious mind, which is the active part of our mindset that thinks and talks about stuff, is our frontal cortex, which is the awake part, so to, say, so to speak. The subconscious isn't asleep, it's just doing things automatically without your awareness, and this is the challenge. And I'll get back to that. I'll get back to the iceberg in a second. That part of the brain is running a lot of processing power and doing lots of stuff in your life, but you don't even think about it. Like the iceberg, the conscious mind is kind of the twenty percent above or ten percent above the waterline, and the subconscious mind is that eighty percent, nine percent below the waterline, which is way more powerful, as you may understand. An iceberg's um, mass is more below the surface than above. Your ability to respond and react with the world is more below the surface than above. Same analogy, same thing applies. Some of your relationships, as I said before, are crashed and burned like the Titanic. Well, crashed and sank like the Titanic. And this is why. You, your conscious mind that you're talking about here, that piece that decides and chooses and thinks and considers stuff, is not making your decisions for you. You're like, what? Surprise? It's true. We think, because we're so civilized and awake and aware, we think our conscious mind decides everything in our lives. It doesn't. It may appear to have certain decision-making capabilities and it may appear to be um, exact executing its intentions into the world. However, 90% of the time, it ain't doing any of that. And it may claim because the conscious mind is very eager, because the, the conscious mind basically is your ego. The conscious mind is basically attached to results. So it's definitely gonna say, I did that, I made that happen. Well, when things don't go the way you want, that part of your mind doesn't usually say, oh, I did that, I made that happen. It's more like, oh, that wasn't me, that was somebody else. Well, it was in a way, because what it was, was your other part of your brain, your subconscious mind, the part in between your conscious mind and the survival instincts. And this is the thing, it is 80%, 90% of your consciousness, which is why I talk about the analogy with the iceberg, because it truly is running your life, and you're just along for the ride. Now, as I said before, it's your, I said it's like your younger self, so imagine basically that most of your consciousness, the 90% below the surface, is around the age of five. Sit with them for a second. So all the decisions you're making around money, around health, around relationships, uh, and more, are all decided by a five-year-old consciousness. Not found, it's only very confident, is it? I mean, you're, pretty, you're probably suspecting that maybe your trading choices haven't been your best choices. Now, you may be acting civilized and acting conscious and awake and having articulate conversations and having great times on the dates. But what I'm speaking about is how do you get to those dates in, in the sense of how do you meet this person? How do you attract that person? How do you bring that person into your life? Obviously, you might drive to the date or you might get picked up, whatever that is. I'm not speaking about mechanical stuff. I'm talking about in energetic consciousness stuff. Stuff, technical term. When you are in a place where, <coughs> excuse me, where you start to notice, which most people do when they start waking up, that this relationship is not much different from the previous relationship and not much different from the previous one before that. They may be very different people. You know, they watch this again. I'm glad you will, Catherine. Um, and feel free to share it with your friends too who might get some value from this as well, please. Um, so the thing is that this relationship you're in now may be a whole different person than the one you had before and the one before that. But there's gonna be, and until you do what I'm gonna tell you in a moment, there's going to be some repeat and um, consistent experiences happening now that happened before and before and before, going back in time. Now, for some people, maybe you, maybe somebody you know, that may be wonderful because what happened before was great, what happens now great, and it's all great all the way through. But for most people, for most people, and those people especially who wanna work with me, just because I'm speaking from a place of ownership, the, the paradigm that they've been running through, the cycle, the, the hamster wheel of experience, so to speak, using an analogy, is because nothing changed. And this is what I mean uh, when I explain this, is repeating the same relationship again and again with different people is like a hamster wheel. You go around in circles and nothing's changing. 
This is because until you do some changing in that mid part of your brain, that part of called your subconscious or your younger self, it's all the same thing, your choices will not change. Your results will not change. Your experiences will not change. I think you're getting my point. So I said this also applies to the area of money, it applies to the area of health. All these different things are running the same way. Is all these decisions you're making, are, even though your conscious mind thinks it's making them, the um, automatic suggestion, the auto-suggestion, the inspiration, the uh, feeling why it should work, is largely coming from a five-year-old mindset. And if you think you want to have a five-year-old in your dating life, you may want to consider changing that. And this is the thing that I keep, it blows my mind because I said, I talked about this in, my, in yesterday's broadcast about my own experience, is that the way you can tell if the five-year-old is making decisions for you around dating is look at your past relationship experiences and then contrast those with your parental relationship as the relationship with your parents to each other or to you. And you'll notice that that relationship that you've been in or the previous relationships you've been in, several of those, have some commonalities with your parents' relationship or the relationships they have with you. You won't have to go far to look for them, but you'll notice them. Whether it is because there's been, there was neglect, it may be your father and your mother never talked to each other and so your adult relationships reflect that. Maybe your father was workaholic and you keep meeting, if you're a woman, meeting men who are never available because they were so busy. That sort of thing is what I'm talking about. Where what's happened to your, happened to your parents? Where was I? Your relationship here, parents relationship, <laughs> which I the screen. So your parental relationship model is what you learned as a kid, as a thing, as a five-year-old, give roughly, is how things work. Again, money, health, relationships, all those areas are being decided and installed as beliefs in your consciousness by yourself as a five-year-old, where it's going, look at what they're doing. I think that's what they mean. So when you look at your parents, I'm going through stuff right now with my money stuff, looking at how my parents deal with money because that's influencing my adult choices with money. It's true in all areas. So just, you know, I'm working this stuff too. That understanding is the first step to transformation. That understanding is the first step to changing your beliefs and changing your success rate with relationships. The thing is, when you start to understand, first of all, that's where it's all coming from. And secondly, you take the steps to realign and you don't, and listen to me say this, that part inside you, that subconscious mind, the midbrain as I mentioned, is basically if you're yourself at five years old. You ain't gonna knock it out or, or kill it or any of that stuff, just to be clear. And if anything else, you can do something else, which is gonna be love it and, and, and make friends with it. Him or her, depending on what, what, what gender you are. So what happened, what, 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 what? <laughs> the way through this, the way to transform this is to actually come together with your younger self and create a new arrangement. Because that subconscious mind below the surface, that 90% of your awareness that's not in your alignment, can be in your alignment when you come into alignment with your younger self. It's basically having an agreement. And in a way, what you're doing is you're gonna be reparenting yourself. That's the best way I can describe it. It's, it's kind of like that. And basically, you're going in internal, we're going inside so you can have a conversation with your younger self and to realign this. There's, there's some, some techniques and processes for my clients to do like a, this parts integration and reparenting of the tools. But what we're really doing is coming to an alignment between your five-year-old and your adult self where you're on the same page. Now, your whole choice is above the surface. So what's happening is aligned with where you want to go and it's supporting you where you want to be. Then, the Titanic will miss the iceberg because the iceberg will be visible. <laughs> just go back to that analogy but this is the point I want to make is you can change this it's not indelible it's not impossible and it's not cast in stone but it is unchangeable until you see it clearly act upon it and make the changes and that's the choice you get to make so if you don't want to have your inner five-year-old running your adult dating choices this is where I can help you and this is where you want to do the work whether you work with me or somebody else I'm going to give you I'm giving you some clues but I'm going to tell you how I work with my clients so you know how it works as I mentioned the work I do with my clients a lot of times is to first of all get clear on what it is that's happening so you know oh hang on a second this is going on again and again I know this from somewhere oh I remember my parents it's, it's a it's a memory journey it's a, it's a what's we're looking for it's a um, traveling through memories thank you Catherine appreciate that I'm hitting it as you put it going back to the younger self and then discovering it's like oh now I remember because a lot of times this stuff is not even conscious it's actually subconscious in the subconscious so to speak so it may not be something you go oh of course I know that but with some coaching and guidance which I provide you get to go down to a younger part inside and start realizing, start seeing and clearly understanding what it is that you took on as a belief around the area of love 
or relationship or money or health, etc., etc., etc. And by having understanding, first of all, what that is, that's when change can happen because it takes your ability to love and be compassionate with yourself that starts to realign the programming and change forms everything going up from there because then it becomes a domino effect. Because if you change things at that age, then it dominoes all the way up to your current life. So you become free to love the way you intentionally, consciously want to make it happen. So no longer are you thinking you're directing the car, but you're not. You will direct the car and you actually get where you want to go because your younger self will be driving the same direction that you are. So instead of being pulled apart because your conscious mind wants to go one place and some conscious mind wants to go another place, you'll actually be aligned in the same direction. And that's when magic happens. So I talk about this a lot because I know it works and I love what happens. So that's why I'm passionate about this, as you may have guessed. And I am making room for some new clients. So I'm letting you know in the comments, I'll leave a link so you can have a chat with me. You can't sign up for coaching. I'm sorry, you can't just do that off at the top. You have to talk to me first because I'm also selecting who I want to work with just to be tra just transparent because I can't work with everybody. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to. There's too much work. But if I'll put a link in the comments. I mentioned I'll put the... Uh, a, um, a complimentary clarity conversation with me in the comments. The link is the chat that will be in there. That'll be in the comments as well as my book, as I mentioned. And part of the work I do, as I mentioned before and mentioned many times, is I help my clients fall in love with themselves again. Because the other part of this is, is when you start learning how much power you have and how much alignment there is, I'm glad you understand. Thank you, Catherine. Let me know. When you understand and appreciate who you are, you start to fall in love with yourself. So I start you on the other side of that, which is not love yourself as an adult. So when the love is really abundant in your adult life, it trickles down to help you realign with your younger self as well. And so your inner five-year-old, who may not have felt love when he or she was a child from your parents, will feel a massive amount of love from your adult self. So my self-love guided meditation, I'm going to be in the comments too, because that helps. And those three things, if you, if you did all those three things, even if you don't work with me, you do those three things, just have a chat with me, you'll have some transformation. If you work together, I can guarantee that uh, that, that Titanic will sail free. <laughs> I think about being tied together. So I hope this made sense to you. And thank you for the feedback, Catherine. I appreciate the input to know it's okay. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, wondering who I'm talking to, this was a Facebook Live first. And so I do these talks on Facebook Live on my personal page, which is which is Barry Selby. You can watch me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Although I've been pondering if I may move it earlier. We'll see. I think 5 p.m. Pacific time might work. I'm... I may move it, just so you know. So join me tomorrow, same time, same channel. The replays you can watch on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. And then also I put the replays onto my YouTube channel, which is where you may be watching it, um, which is, uh, YouTube channel is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine, where they all live. And you can watch them all there as well. So I hope this makes sense, and I trust that it is hitting where, it, where you want to hear it, so you feel it, because this will change your life. It will change your own... Um, paradigm around money, around health, around relationships. All of this can change if you do this work. So I'm inviting you to check it out, to reach out to me, get some support, and for once and for all to come into alignment with yourself so that all parts of you are on the same page. When that happens, your life transforms. I thank you for watching as always. I will see you again tomorrow. I'm inviting you to take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.